Hello everyone, my name is Aluma Yahya and I'm an incoming Columbia Engineering student and today I'll be talking to you all about a revolution that I'm thinking about in phage therapy. So I want you to imagine the first time that you rode your bike. So over time you learn how to ride your bike, you go places with your bike, but one day you don't see the cracked pavement in front of you and you tragically cut your knee. Now, what I'm about to tell you today is not science fiction. It is our terrifying reality called antibiotic resistance. And it is responsible for over 1.27 million deaths around the world. That number is projected to increase to 10 million by the year 2050. And if you take a look at that graph, it surpasses the number of cancer deaths in the same year. Our overuse of readily available antibiotics is creating superbugs, bacteria that render antibiotics ineffective. And it's leaving our doctors with very limited options, like using powerful antibiotics for the slightest of infections. So let's face it, we have a global crisis here, and better or more antibiotics is not the solution. This is where we go back to a forgotten army that existed before technology before science, and even before us, bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are the apex predator of bacteria itself. And unlike antibiotics that kill both the good and bad bacteria, phages are like highly trained assassins that essentially target one type of bacteria. So the components of the phage are as follows. We have the tail fiber that helps ground itself onto the bacteria, the tail that acts as an escape route for the genetic information, and the phage's head that protects the DNA and protects it with a protein called capsid. Now these components are all necessary for the phage's life cycle, called the lytic cycle. It starts off with the phage attaching itself to the bacteria and injecting its genetic information. It then uses the host resources to produce multiple phages, and this exponential increase in pressure results in the active lysis of the bacteria. So you're probably thinking the same thing I thought. I have presented you with the facts, the problem, and now the solution, right? Easy, just use phages. But there is one problem that phages on their lonesome cannot provide a solution to, biofilms. Biofilms are a community of microorganisms that stick together via a slimy encased matrix called EPS, and it provides the life support and protection from outside threats like antibiotics. Now, biofilms in the picture, we don't have a single superbug anymore. We have a family of them, and so much so that they develop a 10 to 10,000 fold increase in resistance. They have a serious vendetta against antibiotics. Cut from the same cloth as that plaque on your teeth or that mysterious humming sound sometimes you and only you hear, biofilms have occurred in our life in one way or another. But for some people, it isn't just a mere inconvenience. It's life-threatening. 65% of bacterial infections and 80% of chronic infections involve biofilm formation. Now, biofilms, as an example of a superbug that involves biofilm formation, is called Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and it essentially causes biofilm formation in the lungs. So as you can probably tell, biofilms are a reservoir for antibiotic resistance. And because of this two millimeter thick surface, this slimy encased matrix, it prevents bacteria and phage contact. If the phage can't land itself onto the bacteria, it means no lysis, no infection, and no elimination. This is where I say we kind of give our phage a little bit of that Iron Man upgrade. We will supercharge bacteriophages with enzymes. An enzyme is a catalyst that expedites biochemical reactions in any organism, and specifically we'll be using an enzyme called dispersion B. DSBP is a biofilm degrading enzyme that splits apart the bonds of the biofilm and exposes the vulnerable bacteria inside. And combining the two are very simple. We can just genetically engineer the phage DNA. We take the phage DNA and we snip off a section of the genes. We then insert what's called a donor plasmid, which is a large sequence of DNA that has this DSPB producing gene inside of it. We then insert this into the missing genome and we have now created an enzymatically engineered bacteriophage that upon infection can release the enzyme and double the damage on these superbugs that are contributing to antibiotic resistance. 
By the end of this, I hope you've realized two things. One, we are stunting our growth by letting antibiotic resistance outsmart us. And two, the answer lies not in more or better antibiotics, but in a forgotten army of bacteriophages with a little bit of help from our friend, Dispersing Bee. Let's embrace this new frontier and rewrite the future of medicine together. Thank you.